Hey, Scott, I've got things all, you gave me a thumbnail that's uh, all appropriate for what we're going to talk about right here. Or what do you want to talk about first? I don't know. You've got a couple things you want to talk about. Well, I was, well, I was going to talk about that for sure. On, let me see, make sure I'm muted. Oh, yep. Okay, I'm muted. Okay, sorry, I'm I tell you what, I mean, don't don't apologize. Uh, somebody that's had tech problems for the past two weeks has been Scott Adams, and he, no, really? uh, you know, and he's he's one of these guys that'll he sees somebody bring it up, and he'll he'll block them because it just makes him mad. Nah. You know? <laughs> and I think it's 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 kind of funny. It's like we're just trying to tell you we we can't hear your stupid show. <laughs> and he's like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Next time, so, next person that says that, I'm blocking them. That's funny because uh, someone I know, I'm not going to say who it is, someone I know uh, was talking about AI and, and basic AI art. Uh -huh. And was talking about how, you know, artists are mad about AI art, but they need to, you know, they need to realize that it's coming, you know. And, yeah, it's here. And, and and they, and they were like, this is going to be controversial. And so I reached out to, I commented a couple of things. One of my comments, of course, was that technology is never kind to artists. I don't, if, if artists yeah. embrace technology, I mean, I hate to say this because I sound like a Luddite, but it's literally, technology has never been kind to artists. Um, it's, it's happened since photography it's happened since improved printing that allowed them to print photos and then color photos in magazines mm -hmm. um you know it goes up to you know I, I always tell the story i went to school for commercial art that was basically i was trained to do paste-ups and most people probably don't know what paste-ups are but you would you had to if you had mm -hmm. like a newspaper you had to take down all, take all the text and get it printed out and like strip it down and, yeah. and then take that and have it photographed so they can make plates that all went away in the nineties with desktop publishing and yep. you would do spot illustrations and stuff that all spot illustrations used to be a big thing that went away with clip art. You know, mm -hmm. uh, there's a great documentary on YouTube about the history of clip art where it's like, Oh, I didn't know that. Expensive. Oh yeah. I'll have, to see, I'll have to see if I can find it and send you the link. And it's okay. And it's like, anyway, but, you know, an AI, I consider AI just kind of the latest thing in that. But, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, which, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's good. In fact, my thing is, I don't like it because I think that the ultimate end is that nobody has, there's, there's not, there's no opportunity for people to make a living being creative. Well, it's like know? that Tucker Carlson said, thing said, let's stop act stop creating systems that are anti-human basically uh Absolutely. you know i mean why if, we, if, why if, if it destroy just destroys things? a whole swath of jobs it's not a buggy whip when you just destroy uh right. jobs that's and make say. make oh, it's like the buggy whip well, no it's that, not it's not really cars came along it's this it's like help it's, things yeah it's more like selective elective surgeries you know it's like what do <laughs> yeah. who do you who do you want to uh, cut out of our society, you know, and, exactly. and if you're making if you're making choices like that, you're you are making choices. It's like uh, just just tell us who you want to die, right? <laughs> you know? it's, it's like when they, and and I'll try to move aside as you as you take like your when shots. The, the World Economic Forum says, or some, or Bill Gates says, we need to reduce population by, and he'll name the number, and then you get to figure it's like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> It's yeah, 40%. It's like, well, that, which, that, which, how many, which how many get caught? does he want to kill? I may get caught in that purge, yeah. Yeah, does he, how's he going to call us? It surely he yeah. won't use a virus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, God, I just got us demonetized. <laughs> but anyway. You may have got us, yeah, you may have got us, uh, well, well, you'll at least up in the corner, it'll say, uh, check this for actual COVID information. That's right. what they do to you every well, time. Don't, uh, they, hey, don't uh, get me wrong. I'm not saying COVID is fake, but I'm, you know, I'm saying it was a, uh, the origins are suspect. Geez. Anyway, yeah. anyway, so, so my friend was talking about this and I was commenting on a lot. He got a lot of, of course, there's a lot of people that are, you know, gnashing their teeth and going, oh my gosh, you know, though, this is, you got to fight it. And he's like, 
well, first off, he's not an artist, so he doesn't need to fight it. But, but yeah. he was saying that that somebody that we worked together like blocked him because of it, you know. Huh. And he tried to reach out to him, and they were like, "Nope, not gonna." You that's know, a, that's somebody a, that is a bridge is too some, far. It is somebody that is younger than either one of us, and hmm. is an is an artist and is coming up. I would say. I think she's done a little bit of work for Dark Horse, and she is, I would call, and and she is kind of the, well, let's just say, um, I think that, um, how can I say this? You know, you've made a comment, and I don't don't repeat, but you said there's a certain, in the animation industry was taken over by, I don't know if you remember telling me that. Oh, like yeah, yeah. I, I, said, okay. I said John Crick Falusi said that there was a, don't, don't uh, say basically, what it was. Don't what? Say what it was. Don't, okay. Don't say who it was, but okay. she's a gatekeeper. She's half of that. Uh huh. <laughs> so he, I just say I just told you. But anyway, my my point is, she is somebody that has kind of ridden this wave of we have to diversify the workforce. I, and I'm not saying she's not talented, but she's but so so she is in she's she's. Um, in her sweet spot, let me put it that way. And here he's talking about this, and she just wasn't having any of it. Mm-hmm. You know? And I, you know what? I mean, I don't blame her. I'm fortunate because, you know, I have a I have a really good day job. Um, you know, I'm 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 so busy at my work that you know it it doesn't matter. And I'm you know I'm of the age that if if all that collapsed, I would be fine i would just ride it out to like could literally retire mm-hmm. um and and not only that but um you know i'm gonna do i'm doing this comic and i'm gonna do this comic and and, and i'm not making any money and i don't care if i make money or don't make money uh, and if this comic doesn't go anywhere or or dan fires me or whatever i'll draw my other co- i'll draw my own comic yeah. i'll draw whatever because I enjoy drawing, and that's my thing. Is like, why would someone want? And this is this is why I think AI separates people. Um, because why would it? It, it, it I, to me it separates the what I would consider the true artist from the people who are just in it for the bucks. Because mm-hmm. why would if if you're truly creative, if you're driven to create, why would you ever want to hand that over to a machine? You would want to do it yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and so to me, if you're if you're content with AI, and, and I don't get into this labels of artists or whatever, but to me, you're not a true artist if you're like, I'd rather do it with a machine because either because it's faster or the results are better or whatever. I don't care about speed. I don't care about results. I don't care about, um, you know, oh my gosh, I get all these opportunities. I care about putting marks down on paper and mm-hmm. why would I want, if you, if you, you know, I'm thumbnailing uh, chapter four right now. Mm-hmm. And if, if you said, oh, I got this program and all you gotta do is read the script into it and it'll draw it all out for you. It'll be perfectly done. And you can input your style and look exactly like you draw it. Why in the hell would I want to do that? I want to draw it. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, you know, that's, I, and I think about that. I think about you, who's constantly drawing, even no. though you don't I really wish I was. have to be. No, I don't have well, to yeah, be. You, you wish you were doing more, right? Yeah, yeah, all right, exactly. Anyway, that's my soapbox, you know, because if you don't well, want to no, create... Well, no, it's interesting. It, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting topic anymore to... Um, because the reality is it's just it's a guy was showing me something on photoshop today and youtube channel that uh it's like my god i never knew how to do that i if i'd known how to do that all of those uh stupid uh things i did for uh in world would have been so much better if i just started this one little thing that this guy takes oh, no. two two minutes to do I said, my gosh, why, why didn't I know that? And it's because it's just, it's buried under there as a way to, to, uh, you know, uh, as a a method of starting. And it's like, geez, you know, and it was as important as a color choice, you know, 
Yeah. You, you could have this masterful way to pick your colors from, you know, a nice photo or a piece of art you already liked that wasn't, that didn't require that you did uh, little color picks all over it or anything like that. You could just oh, you'd uh, add it to your palette. It added to your palette. Yeah, no, no. You could curve. you could just set it down as just kind of like a whole bunch of nice noise underneath the whole thing and bring it up real organically. It was it was just a fun thing to look at. I'm going to try it now. You know, it's like it's yeah, like I got, try I got it, to man. try it. So speaking, so I want to show you something I got. Speaking of um, speaking of drawing for the love yes. of drawing. I'm going to show you what I Oh, have. yeah, let me solo you on this thing about, go ahead no, no, tell no, us what this that. is. Oh, not that yet. Well, that's all right. No, I I uh, really appreciate this. You gave me one of these, didn't you? Well, I gave you a... I gave it, did I give it back to you? No, no, no. I gave, I gave you a Lulu copy oh, okay. of the first 12 issues. Oh, that's this right. Is, I do have it. Oh, my gosh. This is... All of it. issues, all of it, spiral bound. My gosh, what a great yes. thing. You know, uh, oh, so... The Lulu oh, so, wasn't open flat. Yes. So, yeah, awesome. So, uh, you, you know, uh, oh, uh, what's his name? The guy that uh, helped create or started, basically, Image, the guy that it was his big idea. Rob Liefeld. Rob Liefeld, he was talking about... He, 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 the business model of this, I don't know why he's so slow to finally catch on to it, but he loves the yeah. idea of what Byrne has done here. And he it sounded like he might be emulating it. <laughs> uh oh, what is that? That's your trophy. You added that to the, to the... <laughs> you don't want that in there, huh? Okay, that's weird. It's almost like uh, having your, uh, having something caught in a machine or something. I don't know. That is, hey, you could have you could have left that in there as a little uh, page break. No, I don't. No. I don't need evidence of where I did this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't do it all. I did some of it at the house, but and I made. So what I did is, I I printed. Obviously, I printed this out. It's double sided. This is like you know, it's it's thirty issues, thirty two issues. I figured, and it, some of them, one of them is long, but most of them are 30 pages. So, all those pages uh, waiting for inks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he but, sold them all. He sold them all, right? He sold them all. But so I did them on regular copier paper. Uh -huh. And then some of them didn't even end up correct. And then I put these chapter breaks in on like an index card stock uh -huh. because it, it's not they're not numbered he didn't and he didn't do covers and so i wanted yeah. to be able to kind of flip through and find yeah you know, what you want to look at chapter you know issue or issue 15 14 you know that, that's great man and, and you know I that is so uh that is so fun and generous of him to just have a big community of saying hey you like my x-men i liked x-men and wow how cool well, and, and see here's the thing so and this is this is why I was segued to this because, you know, in the case of anybody who's watching this and doesn't know the story, uh, John Byrne um, drew obviously drew X Men in the seventies and eighties, and is retired or semi-retired, and he was sitting around the house and he thought, you know, I wonder if I could draw. How would I if I was drawing X Men now, but with the mentality I was using back then in terms of like finishes, how would I draw it? Uh -huh. And I mean, to me, man, if you look at this stuff, it looks like super Neil Adams, man. Yeah. You know, in a lot of spots. And I and and I I really dig it because it's it's the perfect combination of loose and and but tight and you know anyway, anyway. So he did he did one issue. And his idea was he, he well he did one image and he posted it on his forum and people loved it. Uh -huh. So he just kept going. He made a yeah. story out of the first thing of Wolverine and Sauron fighting, which is here on the cover. And did uh, uh, was then, there any, did he ever uh, say anything about how much he uh, uh, disciplined himself to produce per whatever? He did it. He did it every day, dude. Okay. I think he took. I think he may have taken weekends off. Hmm. But he would. 
I'm trying to th- I'm trying to remember if he put out the so okay so what he did is he drew this he drew he drew the story or he drew the first episode uh, the first issue and he realized he kind of liked it and the 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 uh, premise was if Dark Phoenix had lived because he was involved in when Dark Phoenix died. Mm-hmm. And they didn't want her to die originally, but it was kind of mandated by Shooter. There's a whole controversy there. But anyway, uh-huh. they, they say it was Shooter mandated it. And so they just wanted her to be lobotomized. And so he's taken that. And it's funny because there's stuff that happens in here that calls back to some of the issues he did after that, which wasn't very many. It's only like four or five. But there's several things where they talk about that. So it kind of fits in between the issues he did. Uh, even after the, but it starts off from the Dark Phoenix thing, but uh, he did it, and then uh, he did start doing a couple issues, and at some point, somebody from Marvel, the Marvel was interested, and he kind of talked to them, and they were going to get back with him, and they never did, so I got tired of waiting on him, so he withdrew his offer, but I've said all along, this was the best thing for him, because He's, I think he sold these pages originally that his his uh, his uh, art dealer was selling them. I think they're like two grand a page. Yeah, and it's like, how, can you imagine the multiple of that if I had two grand a page? Yeah. Did you, have you ever done any math on uh, what you imagine he made on it? No, I haven't. That would be some good. Well, it's, I mean, I think I, I, think I figured out this was, 650 pages, maybe 620, oh, something like that. What is that? that? Millions? I don't know. I can't do the math well, that quick. I can't either. And and to be fair, I don't know if he sold them all because some of the pages, I mean, he didn't do it like I'm going to sell every page. So some of these pages may not have sold. I don't know. I don't know if they're still available. That's even two grand a page is out of my price range. But uh, he did it. And I mean, the amazing thing is he did it, and he's one million two hundred thousand. Oh my at, gosh! Six hundred at six hundred, yeah. So he did that, and and so people were like, he should publish it, or Marvel should publish it. But think about it, he did that. He was he was not beholden to any editorial. Yep. He was not, you know, and he put one page a day up on his on his forum. He kind of serialized it every day, and he did it, and he would do until he had a month's worth. That's right. It wasn't up on the weekends, and he would do it until he had a month's worth, and then when he or an issue, and when he got to the end of the month, end of the, he would he would put out ish, page one on like the first day of the month is what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and so some and and it worked out, but some months he'd be like, hey, you're gonna be you know seven days without a new issue. You know, depending on how it mm-hmm. ended and that sort of thing. And he took a, a few days off here and there, mm-hmm. um, but he worked ahead. Um, he uh, he's you know, he would do he would say he was doing these pages like in three hours. I mean, think about that. Uh-huh. You know? That's just pretty amazing. So it was his morning. It was his morning ritual. He'd get up and do it. And it just shows you, he, though, I mean, it's like you can't know the outer edges of what you do unless you stick with it this uh whole thing of like uh, you hear these you know these disciplines of uh, a painting a day and i think to myself a painting a day i don't i can't couldn't do that of course i could if, you know if it, they might be they might suck early on but you know you you're developing the callus uh, or whatever you know for well you know getting the task him, done what's people that people have asked him you know like well like other artists have said, you know, what do you, what, how do, what's your secret? And he'd say, I'd go to their studio and they'd have a big TV in there. And they'd yeah. have, And he's like, he doesn't have any distract. He said, he said, when I sit down, all I pay to do is the page. Right. And people have asked him, do you, you listen to music? Nope. I don't listen to music. He said, I work best in absolute silence, uh-huh. you know, and, and I think some people that would drive them mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some, um, yeah. You know, but he, he, I, in fact, I think he wouldn't even like drink coffee or anything. He's like, I just sit down and work when he was doing a regular book, he would work 
and I think he said in between each page, he'd take a 30 minute break. Mm -hmm. And then, but like when he was working regular, like, you know, I've, I've heard, I'm sure it changed over the years, but his goal was to be at the drawing board by, I think it was like seven 30 in the morning and he would work until noon and then he'd stop or maybe 11 and then he'd stop. It seemed like he'd take it like an hour, hour and a half for lunch. They had a long lunch. And, um, and then he would quit working by like three every day, you know, yep. and he was like, I could do three pages in that, you know, which is that, that window. Amazing. Yeah. He would do that. And in fact, I've heard when he lived in Calgary, he lived in an apartment, I guess was downtown because he would go out and it's, and he'd walk the uh, the plus, you know, the I, I think I've sent you a video of the plus fifteen in Calgary, mm -hmm. which is their elevated walkway mm -hmm. through yeah, the downtown. Little, yeah, a skyway. Yeah. Yeah. So he'd walk that or meet a friend or whatever, you know. But anyway, the, you know, we were talking about doing work just for the sake of doing work. Now, don't get me wrong. What did we say he made? A million and a half dollars doing this. Yeah. That's a nice little million and a half dollars invested reasonably well with a with like just a regular money market thing supposedly would make you three grand a month in interest hmm. so i mean you know yeah anyway uh, that's pretty groovy i uh I, I dig that about the idea that someone can take their art and you know and this is before you know i mean this is uh burn having established himself without social media Right. Becoming uh, a guy that people sought, yeah, and uh, and uh, you know supported him even in spite of not being turbocharged with social media. Yeah, I mean he's and what's funny is he's not on any social media now. Except the only thing he's on is his forum, mm -hmm. and even now people are going, "Wait, what?" You know, like in the in the John Byrne Facebook group, every time somebody posts some of these pages. They'll be like, where is this from? I don't know about it. It's like, well, you don't go to his forum. I mean, the forum mm -hmm. numbers are very low. I think it's less than a thousand at his forum. Mm -hmm. They don't because people are so they, they used to be a thing. People go to forums and they don't anymore. You know, now it's like, how do you even find them? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah the that's has changed. Used yeah, they, uh, they have uh, things I don't understand how to do the um, oh, I forget that other big social thing that is just apparently, you know, a great way to, oh, I can't even think of the name of it now. But you what's the other thing you got there? Traffic. Yeah, oh, yeah. this is their thing. Uh, okay, so speaking of John Byrne, mm -hmm. so you had mentioned this, and I said, oh, I have a copy of that. Now, I don't know yeah. if you realize it's a literal photocopy. <laughs> so, so it's not going to so be, uh, it's not going to be what people at one time could pick up off the no, shelf it is. yeah it is it's just it's just copies of this go for yeah big bucks one of my friends had one lent to me so i copied it i made photocopies of it but i mean I'm, the only I'm, difference I'm, is the the covers in color uh-huh oh, oh okay so uh oh you like mean I this was never it. actually published in yes. a, a strictly okay okay it was it was a comic book that came out Okay, okay. And that's what I mean. And, the actual comic book. I don't know what you're are are you asking if I have the actual comic book? No, no, no. I'm saying there was an actual comic book. Oh, I sure. Have. You can buy it on eBay. Okay. Yes. Yes. But it, is, but it's, and but it's, it's big bucks. You, you, yeah, now I looked at it, um I think it's about fifty bucks. And it's not worth it, by the way. Yeah, you're um, gonna show us why. Go ahead. I mean <laughs> Well, I'm gonna tell you the story about it. So Okay. So, so somebody, I think it's this Salson guy, which I have a lot of Salson books. Um, uh, but he was doing like instructional kind of comic book kind of stuff. And he, in fact, I think he's the one that put out the, the John Byrne, Art of John Byrne book. Let me see if I got one right here. I don't see it. it there's one on the other shelf. But anyway. Anyway, like in the 80s, and he contacted John Byrne about about giving art or doing art for it. And John Byrne 
lent him one of his sketchbooks. Uh-huh. Um, and apparently John Byrne draws in his sketchbooks a lot. Or when he's younger, he drew all the time, obsessively. But when he got done with them, he would throw them away. Oh, my god! keep any of them. I know when you think about the money. And some of them, he said friends of people that like got them out of the trash and then he started burning them when he realized that people were, would find them and they'd somehow, you know, get in the public eye. And I talked to him about it when he was in Oklahoma city years ago, back in the nineties. And he said his, he, he said, I, cause I asked him if he kept a sketchbook and he said, for years I did what I called the sketchbook that no one gets to see. And he said, my idea was I would draw in it. And since there was no pressure about anyone seeing it, I could experiment, I could do whatever, and I didn't let, I did not let anybody see it. And, uh, and he said, my idea was ultimately the good stuff would find its way into my work over Mm -hmm. the years. Anyway, so originally this was called John Burns, how to draw comic, John Burns, how to draw comics, comic. They promoted as that John Burns saw it and threatened to sue him because he said, no, no, no. I contributed, but you can't put my name on it. Yeah, yeah. But he did do a cover. This is a new cover. And uh, and this is not John Byrne, even though it might. And the original one kind of got red hair like John Byrne. It's a spoof off of the Norman Rockwell cover. Uh-huh. Or the, the where he's drawing, where he's painting, and, and there's a, or something. But anyway, um, but it, the, the artist is smoking in this. And John Byrne said, I've never smoked, you know. Mm-hmm. So this is the first, and I don't know how much of this, I don't think like this is John Byrne art, but it may be from his sketchbook. So it talks about the tools. It's been forever since I looked at this, which is every, every art book of a certain period would talk, would have the exact same. Yeah. Here's it's the like tools. A, get, get a ruler and all this. Crap. Yeah. Here yeah. you need a ruler, get some, get some paper, get a desk. That looks just yeah. like my desk, by the way. I had that exact same with the thing and and then the foot deal. So then here's some John Byrne starts off the figure and then obviously not John Byrne proportions, you know? Oh yeah. He's just like cut and paste some Loomis. Yeah. Yeah. I know they probably did rip it off of Loomis or something. It is Loomis. Is it Loomis? Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, and uh, I mean, it's it's accurate. There's nothing wrong with it. Even though the head, look, well, that's realistic proportions. No, it looks good. I'd probably draw that rib cage a little bit bigger just to be mm-hmm. heroic. But well, I, I don't know. Maybe it's not Loomis. Maybe it's him copying Loomis. I don't know. Interesting. Maybe. So, so then they're talking about the figure, and here's that may be from uh, crib from uh, uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. You know, I don't know. That may be a burn doodle. This that looks like John Byrne to me. Some of his doodles. That that proportions are John Byrne proportions, I think. And, you know, big rib cage. Then relatively big head on this one, but maybe a little too big. But I've seen some of this I've seen in his in different sketchbooks. You know, this. Oh, that's the other thing is he lent him his sketchbooks and they never returned them. Jeez, um, boy. He ended up selling them. This is like, you know, it's like uh, (laughs) all this uh, enmity or whatever, you know, the hostility that goes on in social media between comic types and it's like uh, camps. It's like, yeah, that was always there because some of these people are creeps. Yes, crooks. There's a lot of creeps and crooks out there. You can encounter them. They're right in front of you. These are all John Byrne figures. These are I don't believe these are John Byrne figures. They just don't have the same kind of weight to the figure. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey! Look at that nice, there nice hulky uh, Hulk and uh, thing. yeah, some good Grimm notes. Yeah, Dude, your Samson Ben Grimm I thought was really good proportions. By the way, <laughs> oh, I, I just went nuts on uh, bending him. In terms of like yeah. making him too big, not John Byrne stuff. This is John Byrne stuff, hundred yeah. percent. This is and that. And that looks like something. One of his doodles. This, yes, this, uh, this maybe. Th- uh, this is 
This yeah. may be. I don't think this is. This doesn't look. It doesn't have the same kind of look to it. Now, this is, I believe, that. I think these well, are. Well, you never know. Like you say about that, uh, the sketchbook thing, he lets himself maybe uh, do some things yeah, he wouldn't he do if, it, it. If, it, if he was going to share it. You know, it's like. It he, is interesting because you don't see a lot of this kind of his art, his uh -huh. real rough, you know, art. And, you know, it's like when I so see a present, is, present a figure drawing, it's like, huh. He he just he was just there to work that night. He didn't try to doll it up too much, you know. Yeah. So these are John Byrne thumbnails. I know they're his thumbnails because I've seen them in an interview with him, and mm -hmm. I I have no idea what story they're from. Um, I think they're, but there there is an interview that's got them in there. So this is. So this is this is the page and i think john byrne drew this um these may be out of order no they're not out of order this doesn't look like this is where you know it's late it's called it jumps to 26 maybe i may be missing some pages uh oh yeah so these are john byrne faces John, if I don't have the thing I'm looking for in here, I'm gonna be unhappy. Uh oh. Yeah, more faces. I thought I saw. I flipped. Oh, I'm not gonna have it, am I? Oh, I don't have it. Rats. Yeah, there was something I I discovered a a page break I've, on something I thought I owned that uh, it does well, bug you, I'm doesn't it? <laughs> so there's a thing floating around. Hang on just a second. Let me stand up and look at my files right here. Okay. There's a thing floating around that he did, which is the only part of this that I would say, oh, is this it? Oh, here, this is it. You found uh, it. You probably yes. took it out to study it. Yes, I, I did. Well, I don't even know if this is the same. This is, seems like it's a different, but this was part of the book originally. I think what I did is when I got it, I Xerox the parts I didn't have because this is not Xerox. This is a print, I think, because uh -huh. it, it's 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 a uh, um, pixelated. Let me go through this. So I like this stuff. You don't see a lot of this stuff, but apparently he drew a lot of these kind of techie backgrounds in his sketchbooks. You know, and I think that's so pretty cool. His, his environments, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here he's doing some more. This is him for sure. Just work, just working out. Just masses stuff. and textures. Yeah, yeah. The John oh, Byrne no, sketchbook is here. Thing? Oh, look, an actual sketchbook See, we was got robbed because he after this they were going to do a, a facsimile of one of his sketchbooks, uh -huh. and he was like, "No, no, you aren't." After that, uh, I mean, how cool yeah. would that have been to have? Yep. Yeah, that would have been so cool. they their greed screwed the fans. Anyway. Okay. Well so that's, that's pretty that. cool. But that's here's the chapter that here's the good chapter. Oh, I got a low battery warning. Uh oh. Storytelling this... in comics. I could see where that could be gold. John Byrne yes. telling you about Especially storytelling. By somebody like John Byrne. Mm -hmm. Hang on just a second, I'm plugging in power. Okay. Scott may disappear. <laughs> nope. I'm, well, okay. I uh, my my headphone fell out. I'm losing weight, and nothing oh, fits good. apparently, including my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> my earbuds don't fit my. You're my saying fit differently. You're saying you're a fat head. Okay. Well, yeah, I was. Okay. Or so, was. What? Hey, uh, so is... YouTube user says, you know who, who YouTube user is. Evening, guys. Yeah, what's, yeah, yeah. What's the hat? He's like, yeah. why are you not doing thumbnails? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this is the part that I thought was really good and that I wanted to share with you. I'm not going to read all this, but he talks about storytelling in comics and what it is. And he's like, I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to, well, so he just he gives some advice. His, his big thing is it's about clarity, and mm -hmm. so um, 
he talks oh. about flying, and this was in that other page about how you know when you show somebody flying, you got to make sure they're flying, mm -hmm. you know, or here. Are we sure this guy is, is this guy flying? Is he a giant? What's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, what is going on with this guy? I forget the. You know, talking about and crops talk, and how to enter the panel from how and, you do it. Like here, you don't want to you don't want to objectify the panel. In other words, to, the panel yeah. doesn't exist, so your hero shouldn't be leaning against it. Plus, yeah, um, yeah. Plus, he's leaning against something that, in perspective, wouldn't wouldn't support so, him. Can you see the screen, Ellis? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I've got you in solo what's, layout. What's wrong with these two? What's wrong with this sequence in comics? I'll, I'll quiz you and see if you can catch it. Okay. Uh, got a guy entering us. Uh, and, uh, well, it's, it's not uh, a filmic thing. He, it's not breaking the 180 rule. Um, no. It's uh, in comics. It's like... You're it, overthinking it. It's okay. Easy. It just looks too, I don't know, what? Okay, okay. <laughs> he opens the door with his right hand, and the next panel he's opening it with oh, his left hand. continuity. <laughs> continuity, yeah, it's, and it talks about that. Hey, Dan says um, if you have any thumbnails, I'd love to see them. <laughs> Pressure. <laughs> I've, all I've got is the, the one I emailed to him. I've got my, I've got, so... I know you got just my, got the script. It's cool. You just got the script. Okay, no, go ahead. No, I've got my notes, and I've got I've got thumbnails in my notes. I just need okay. to make thumbnails. Yeah, that's, the way you, that's the way you do it. Yeah, you know, make little yeah, micro yeah. notes. Well, I'm doing bigger thumbnails this time, Ellis, because I'm I'm considering printing them out on the back of the page. Going back to that, see if I can work sure. faster that way. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like just a, a weird. Um, you don't you she's looking this way so you don't want to show her looking that way because it's like what's what's going on is it a different person is it the same per you know yeah. it's just a continuity deal right there okay he, he's yeah 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 the uh, uh gu we'll guide see. the eye guide the yeah well and a little bit is like if you show somebody looking one way in one panel they're looking this way it's just a weird like what's going on kind of thing mm -hmm. so you know um let's see i don't know what this is let's see figure 11 let me see if i can find this uh, is it 11 yeah 11 uh, good grief i didn't put the pages anywhere near okay look at figure 11 is there a good reason for this room to be tilted relative to the viewer is it really tilted or just for dramatic effect um, if it's just for, oh, what he's saying is when you do this, it's like, is the room really tilted or is it just a, a, the camera trick? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you need to show, somehow establish that the room is not like cockeyed, like the Titanic or something, you know? Oh, <laughs> I just, I'm yeah. sorry. I was, I was distracted by something else I was doing, but I'm, uh, yeah, go ahead. So this panel is um is showing you you generally read left to right so this is going against the way oh yeah read. yeah that is a that is a thing look at that grid now he explains yeah. how he uh, he is scrupulous and you you try to copy him on that you always try to have a grid on yeah even, uh, even definitely your... if there's a background or mm -hmm. something that needs a grid so this is just a, a, an example of establishing shot. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's like, this is too close. This is too far. He's like, this is the right way to do an establishing shot. And and then he talks about the grid he uses. Like, like Dan yeah, says, the, she, she could be turning her head to avoid eye contact, referring back to the other one. Maybe she yeah. got asked a question, doesn't want to answer. It, it could be. Yeah, it yeah. Could yeah. Be, for sure. So there's that. And then, you know, it talks about, uh, clarity. His thing is cl his thing is clarity. So then it's got some examples um, from his about backgrounds. How he does some backgrounds, some establishing shots. You know, there's there's New York. There's Annihilus's or, or no? Who is that? Is that Annihilus? I think it is Annihilus. Anyway, whoever that is, is at the is at the Baxter Building. 
and then here's a here's an example of a reverse uh, like a pullback to reveals like hey who's watching the Fantastic Four why it's Galactus you know and then we get a clear establishing shot of his obviously massive ship. Hey, you, you've, uh, of course, listened to and have a copy of that um, Marvel, uh, what is it called? Marvel that, uh, you know, the complete history of Marvel. Oh, yeah. Marvel Comics, The Untold Story. Uh, the uh, Untold Story. Have you listened to Marvel, all of Marvel? Uh, uh, it's funny uh, you say that. I have that on my phone and I've listened. I, I have not made it past the introduction yet. I need to listen to it. Well, it's it's interesting because the guy he takes a you know an hour and a half yeah, to dive. to introduce you to the idea of, of all the difficulties that lay ahead of you as the guy that has to listen to him yeah. Uh, yeah. on on this exhaustive topic, and uh, so it, it is it is kind of hard to break into it, but it's funny i'm kind of in the groove on it now and i'll be able to listen to all 11 hours of it i guess so it's yeah yeah listen to it tell me what much. you think of it i think he's a little bit woke but uh that's all right well better than sleepwalking i guess uh, yeah he, he's <laughs> he's he's read he's uh got the ready complaints about old white men here and there that seems kind oh, of like no. You're being kind of silly, even interjecting that yeah, viewpoint. No, 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 no. I mean, yeah. if, if you're unhappy that white men created Marvel comics, then yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I guess get a time machine and go kill Jack Kirby or whatever. But yeah, you know, I mean, that's that was just how it was. Yeah, at that point, and you know, to complain about it is is it's yeah. like complaining water's wet, you know. That, oh, that's what I'm on right now. As a matter of fact, that burn work from Fantastic Four, they're talking about, he's talking about that transition that went on the, uh, where burn, you know, dropped in on Fantastic Four there. Yeah. After so all the is, Kirby. This is an establishing shot, obviously. So it's so like Doctor, yeah, Doctor Doom, yeah. Yeah. And he says, is a full page shot the, is the ultimate establishing shot. Do this and you can cheat quite a bit on the backgrounds on su subsequent pages, provided you remember sure. that such a shot must contain all the necessary information. The reader will need to carry him for those next few pages. And that, should you cut away to another scene, you'll need to reestablish this shot. Mm -hmm. So, And that's how it's written. John Byrne is very, he's a smart guy and he's, He's very matter of fact, which is probably why he's never written a full how to draw a comics book because mm -hmm. it'd be dry as dirt. But boy, there'd be a lot of gold there. Um, here's an established shot. He's like, eh, the down shot's not the best establishing shot. Mm -hmm. you know, no, or, it's, it's, it's got no juice to it. You know, I mean, it's like uh, it's too objective. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. just it's just, uh, it's just dry, mm -hmm. you know. And then he says, he's on this, he says, notice how panels two and three break the 180 rule. It's like, oops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah. And, and, and to an extent, the 180 rule is, is almost strictly filmic, but you know, in, in comics, it helps to kind of like say, I started on the right with this guy. He's got to stay on the right of the action, you know? Yeah. If he had taken, if he had just shifted Colossus over, he wouldn't have broke it right here. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, there, there's yeah, and there's ways to to do the transition. How you uh, how you establish that someone is. Uh, well, and and I I try not to I try and do that. Like when I'm thumbnail my pages, like this, for example. You know, there. This is how these people are laid out. These three people are, will be, mm -hmm. and I and. I try and not mess up the sequence, you know, even moving through the next couple pages Yeah. and I'll shift to like a down shot or something, but even the down shot, I try and keep them in that order on the page, you know, um, unless there's, unless there's, and I'm trying to think of the script. I don't think there's a reason in the script. Yeah. Real history. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, you know, it's like, well, you can't argue with success. That's my thing. You can say, well, it shouldn't have been whatever, but it's like, well, 
other people should have done in it. Done it. Yeah, Dan wants to know what is this history of uh, Marvel you guys are talking about? Sounds like a real fun read. I think he's being sarcastic. I think <laughs> he must be. Face. Yeah. It's the it's the all a book called All the Marvels, where the guy read every single Marvel. Yeah, he uh, he he tried he tried to. Uh, he he tells you about it. It takes him an hour and a half to tell you all the exceptions to the rule of what he may not be including in his next ten hours. I haven't of made it through the introduction yet. The yeah, introduction is yeah. super long. Yeah. Um, I what is this history of Marvel? You got well, uh, and then he says, also, "Yeah, he's being a bit Marvel sarcastic or whatever." Right, because yeah. he's got a smiley face. I like Marvel Comics: The Unsold Story, even though Rob Liefeld has denounced it and said, well, he didn't interview me. So yeah, <laughs> anything he said about the image days or the image creators are, you know, guessing, but whatever, it's still good. I don't care. It's, the, it's like, Oh it's no, like, it's, I'm it's, big, it, I'm it's, big, it's obviously gold in terms of like saying, okay, this is, this was happening then. And it's cool to, to I, have that. I, I'm a big fan of Walt Disney. Now I'm, when I say Walt Disney, I mean the man, Mm -hmm. And and some of what he created, certainly. Or maybe I'd say what he created. Let me put it that way. And, you know, Bob Thomas wrote uh, uh, Walt Disney, A Complete History or History or something like that. And it's a great book. And people have come out and said, well, no, it left out the part about how Walt Disney did this or that or he was this or that. It's like, you know, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... He's dead. He, why, you know? Well, I mean, he was, you know, I mean, he had a lot of concerns about he was the executor and executive, and he had to worry about yep. <laughs> dramatic changes in the uh, the health of the machine Country. that he had built. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's some more. Uh, I'm not sure... Well, as far as being anti-union, as far as being anti-union, yeah, yeah, well, that, that, yeah, that gets the most passion usually. Sure, sure. Um, and this is this is um, oh, again talking about how when you draw someone flying or swinging, it's good to keep them at least for a couple panels, keep them away from anything, so you know he's not crawling up a wall uh -huh. or whatever, you know. You know, it, it's not a, uh, it's, it's a good little book. It's like that thing I bought from, uh, Hoffman. This is, uh, people that know their stuff and anything they want to share with you. It's like, uh, it's gotta be a help to you to have a, a guy that's got the mileage on him to tell you about it. Yeah. It's nice. And here's it's nice. Thing. Go ahead. Oh, he's picking up the car and it's like, well, make sure when somebody does something make sure that that you realize hey there's nothing picking up the car it's actually him picking up the car you know stan anyway, jack steve and other creators caught lightning in a bottle yeah i mean yeah. they were of their time <clears throat> in terms of like uh you know yeah i mean well and here's what we all forget or what a lot of people forget comics were not a a uh would were, were were not a uh, what would you call it a, a medium that people said oh I want to get in this and get rich mm -hmm. you know I mean I think up until up until uh, oh up until the royalties were instituted I don't know that anybody got into it for the money no people and, that were working in the trenches were uh, thinking about oh, I got to get some advertising money here. Right, I got they a were, transition. Were failed advertising. A lot of them were failed advertising artists, um, or or like in the Bronze Age, there were people that were comic fans that got into it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, certainly in the Gold and Silver Age, they were like, I want to be in advertising. But like John Bashima, you know, he he was in advertising when, when he had gone into advertising after drawing the '50s Captain America when um, Stanley kind of lured him out in, I guess, the early 60s to go back into comics. Mm -hmm. um, somewhere I read, I think it was, uh, somewhere I got a John Romita book, and it, it was, it's that Tomorrow's book, I think, and it, it talks about, I think it's that's the one that talks about how 
uh, he kind of made a deal with Stan that he could work from home and, and some kind of deal, which I think they all work from home, but there was some kind of deal that he had so that he could keep his day job and still draw comics at night. Cause he was making so much money doing advertising until finally it got to where his profit as he made as much doing comics as advertising. But, um, I think, but when people are, are like critical, of some of the, some of the people from the past that made comics, you know, it was either a passion or, you know, yeah, comics were a junk medium. And, you know. Sean Romita yeah. said that throughout the 70s, if his comic was published the next month, they were succeeding. Yeah, it's yep. like, um, you know. Yep, yep. Yeah, well, yeah, the uh, Marvel movies and everything is built on them. This, you know, it's nothing new is being uh, really <laughs> added to the farm team. You know, I mean, it's there's yeah, it's all been done at this point, and and that's all they're going to mine. It looks like to me, you know, they're only they're only going to be mining the uh, stuff that hit in the '60s and '70s. I don't see. Any, uh, you know, oh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I think they have, well, the problem is what they don't mind for the sixties and seventies blows. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. They're, they're, they're finding their way on that. And I don't think it'll come out of traditional comics. They'll, uh, they'll eventually have something that people are excited about that, uh, you know, is a generational enthusiasm. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not that optimistic, which I mean, I don't care. I enjoyed the Marvel movies. They showed a good slice of the stuff that I liked. Um, after Endgame, I have minor interest in them. I've watched all of them, I think, at least partially, and some of them are just so terrible. I mean... Mm -hmm. And, and it's where they go in and either deviate from the source material or they go some of the newer source material that's, that's um, you know, just just terrible stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't care if they don't make any more. I could care less if they make any more Marvel stuff. I don't care about it. If, the, uh, if they do an X-Men and it's good, I'll like it. If they don't. Well, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, if they junk it up like they've done everything else post in game, then, yeah, you know, whatever. I mean, I've I don't live or die by Marvel. I don't like comics because, oh, my gosh, they're making movies because I don't care about that. I care about the comics. Yeah. Well, you know? but yeah, but, yeah, the only reason people their their sole motivation is to get their IP out there so to where they might get uh, you know bought. Walking Dead. Walking Dead screwed up everything like that, yeah. I think. I'm convinced. It's like, hey, I guess some get some Yeah, that's a good example. It, it's Marvel's new Coke now for sure in a lot of ways. And it's you know and and I know Dan was listening earlier. We talked about AI, but you know, the, a, a friend of mine got chastised by a bunch of people because he's talking about AI on the internet. Basically, was saying, "Hey, oh, I've got the, I've, I've watched about nine of the first season, nine episodes of the first season. I think I'm through the first disc. I need to watch the rest of the disc. Um, I have season. You know what he's talking about, Ellis? What? My Hero Academia. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. Uh. That's a that's a manga series that became an anime series. That is a lot of people are like, this is they're doing what Marvel Comics used to do, and I would agree with that. Oh, Black well, Black Cricket, the motion pictures. Man, I gotta say, I'm gonna say this. Um, I got Chapter Four um, a few days ago of the black cricket and, and Dan is bringing the heat as they say, it's, it's really cool. Um, they, we start off in an office where they're discussing the black crickets, um, his alter identity. And they're talking about how, you know, he's running this corporation that his dad founded 
And they're mm-hmm. talking about, oh yeah, this guy's a liability. He's, he's we're, we got to we got to rein him in. You know, um, you got to You know, there's there's you know they're talking about how much of a liability he is. And then we see the black cricket is running across the roof of the building. <laughs> you know, and uh, he and and he basically goes out and gets into a fight. He he basically stops a robbery. And he runs into um, somebody he can't handle, even in his suit. And uh, it, it's it's really really cool. I dig it. I've been I've been biting my tongue wanting to ask Dan, when are we going to get to some action, Dan? Come on. We've well, yeah, it's 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 like you gotta gotta have it set up. He said, "Thanks, brother." Yeah, he set it up. He's it's. it's uh, yeah, good. and. He, um, uh, yeah, you dig that uh, character character building. Development. Yeah, development. Yeah, but I'm hoping to get. I know I've only got one thumbnail done now. I I did something last night. Oh well, I went to church last night instead of drawing thumbnails. Sorry, Dan. Um, and uh, but I'm ready to hop on it. And I'm actually off work on Monday, so. Uh, Michelle is off work, and so I took off. Of course, it may be icy here. Yeah. But oh, I, yeah. I, it, I think t- starting tomorrow, we're uh, in the freezer for at least five days. So Yeah, I think it's going to – well, let's see. It's going to get cold. Very... Well, overnight, it's going to get cold. It may snow tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, God, the other night, you didn't get out when it was so icy, did you, on Monday? No, I didn't. Monday morning. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Holy cow! I slid to work. It was crazy. Um, it was bad because it wasn't icy everywhere. It was icy in spots. Uh huh. Which is the I, worst because it catch you by surprise. Yeah, I hate you missing know. my walk and all that. But I said, Nah, I'm not getting out. Uh, that. yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have got out in if I didn't have to. Had I known how bad it was, I was still might not got out in it. But. Uh, it's supposed to get maybe maybe I see oh, it may we may get like rain or uh, or snow overnight and then it's not Saturday is not supposed to be too bad but then Sunday is supposed to I mean it's gonna be cold yeah but Sunday is gonna you know really dude are you have you been uh, you been channeling some Ben Caldwell over there well it's not Caldwell I'm I've got my uh, Shane Glines headed open right oh. now I've closed it I'll do some drawing of my own but I. I decided to do a little studying, and and you're right. Uh, this is pure. This is where you you get the sense that Caldwell probably gets most of his notions about appeal and pushing the straights and doing the curves and all that. Because Glines is even more so than him in terms of like how he how he pushes this and that. So you know sometimes you know uh, you know you eat their brains, like I say when you. Uh, when you do a little well, copying. So I just decided to do some copying today. That's why, that's why I got this book. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what we're talking well, about today. Today, I get, this could be titled Eat Their Brains, this show. I'll tell you, um, one of the things, you know, and I don't necessarily want to draw like hey, Don Brown, even we'll though catch really up good. with Catch up with Dan. The action is coming. I may do no, that scene we discussed. And the one with the two women in the cafe talking and eating. And no worries, we aren't doing anything about without the good Lord. I'll always put him first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. I. I, I yeah. You know. Yeah. So what? I, one thing I'm doing. I'll tell you this. So while Dan's on the, because I, I've been criticized a little bit, not harshly, but people have said my layouts are too, you know, nine panel layouts. And so I'm looking at John Burns and kind of trying to be inspired by how he was using like a lot of diagonal panels Mm -hmm. and some, you know, bleed outs of the panel and some of that. I'm trying to find some good ones here. You know, just a little bit, just trying to add a little, just trying to be inspired to mix it up just a little bit, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's not quite so um, static. You know, again, not that I'm trying to necessarily copy him, even though I get a lot of inspiration out of this. I'm, I'm trying to copy some of his panel layouts for sure. And the other thing is, 
he's real good about mixing up his shots. Mm-hmm. You know, oh so yeah, you got to you got to be. Uh, me, uh, don't don't do this and then that three times, but do some long shots and some down shots and you know. There's a fo- fellow I follow. Uh, I couldn't tell you his name or anything like that, and probably I don't want to in this context because I'm. Sure. It's a critique. It's a. Yeah. It's this this comic artist guy that's got uh, really quite a bit of talent with the figure. Typically, he does females fighting. I don't know what his thing is on that, but he he's good at it. But yeah. every single panel is uh, involves the full figure, and it's oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's almost like uh, hmm. I don't know that that gets pretty boring by the time you're looked at. 10 yeah. panels so that are all full figure you know you got to you got to get in there close you got to do this you got to do that to uh to make a comic book you got to you know you got to use those 22 panels of uh, well, yeah. of, uh, of Wally, Wally Woods. Woods yeah yeah and i think you want to you got to mix it up a little bit and i mm-hmm. think modern john now x men john Byrne was terrible about it but mo- the modern john Byrne is really good at that Oh, what what do you feel that Byrne was doing? Was he doing too much of the same in terms of like how? Yeah, hang on. I got to. Let's see here. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Not as dramatic as he is. Yeah, this isn't as bad as. He just, he's just not, not, not uh, a lot of, let's see. A lot of it's kind of a straight on. Well, that's, mm-hmm. different. I don't yeah, know. He... Maybe I'm misremembering he definitely got better. Well, you know, I mean, he is working with a guy scripting that he probably was, you know, they had their moments together, didn't they, of arguing about how things ought to be going, oh, you know? absolutely. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, the big thing was John Byrne had drawn stuff, and he would make... So, uh, they didn't work full script. Uh, Claremont would call Byrne, and they'd, they'd work out a plot... Well, I think now I've had people I, that have posted a plot. Anyway, he, as I understand, it, he worked for a plot, maybe a pretty detailed plot, not necessarily Marvel style, but a, uh-huh. but not not dialogued. Oh and well, uh, I can see where that would be quite the shocker. Then all that loaded up dialogue can't be worse than the fight scenes in Echo. Haven't watched or as it. the kids are calling it, Marvel's Bowfinger. Okay. He was he was still just ten years into his career, so Byrne was still teaching and finding his way as an artist on X Men. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everybody, uh, everybody every, gravitates every, to it. Yeah, every art because, Well, because Terry Austin was such a great inker, and they were such a good fit for each other. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm convinced that a lot of it is the way he handled textures. You know, and the X Men were all wearing like shiny suits, and mm-hmm. Colossus was metal, and and there was all kinds of robots and stuff, and and the combination of the two of them, the, all the te- I mean, as a kid, that really appealed to me, the clean lines and the, and all the the just the really cool textures, and uh, when they split up, I think it took John Byrne a little bit to kind of find his way, you know. Did he was he inking it himself? Who? Uh, Burn Burn. on. Uh-huh. On oh, on the X Men. No, Terry Austin was in it. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Is Terry? I mean, and I have that artist edition, and those Terry Austin inks are just super clean. You can see he'll do feathering, Ellis, and then he'll go in, and you can see where he whited out the end so that they all have like a smooth arc on the edges. I mean, it's uh-huh. crazy some of the stuff he did to get it to look clean. I mean, it worked. People love that stuff. I mean, look what he did on uh, Iron Fist and then his X-Men stuff. You see he was already making leaps and bounds with this style. Yeah. Yeah. X-Men. Hey, Scott, I can't believe it. We've already done an hour's worth of this. I uh, I, I guess I'm letting you uh, just <laughs> show off all your Brandon. stuff uh, kind of like uh, kind of filled it up pretty quick. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. <laughs> well, I, so 
So I think people probably say yes, hey, do more of that. Pages, I should be drawing pages of black cricket, barring some kind of weird thing. But I'll have my thumbnails done, and uh, and I've got my. De- this was a good night to do it because my desk is relatively flat. I need to go back into drawing mode, but I've got my desk is covered with paper, so I need to get rid of all this stuff. Get the uh, get it back in in drawing mode. Get my uh, get my drafting machine going and go to town. Yeah, you got your drafting drawn. machine based on uh, based on Burns' drafting machine, right? Did you well, go after one that was to copy? No, oh, no. Okay. I was given one. I knew he had one, and I knew what they were for actually, because my wife used to be a draftsman. She mm-hmm. never had one. But her boss at one of the companies had one on his desk. And I was, so my company bought out an, another business, not not their, it's like they bought all their furniture. It was kind of weird. They bought all their office furniture, which seems weird now. But we got, they had, a, it was an oil, some kind of oil company. And we got all of their, like, dra- we got a bunch of, art supplies and and dra- and we got a drafting table well no one wanted the no one wanted the drafting machine and so they didn't know what to do with it and so somebody said do you want it and i go yeah i'll take it and i knew what it was for and i and it didn't have any of the rulers with it the paddles so i had oh. to order them mm-hmm. i triangle a and e ordered them for me actually uh-huh and uh, that's how long ago it was. And uh, is, is there no such a thing as a Triangle A and E now? No, they closed a few years ago. Okay, yeah, that's right. Wow. I went in there, dude. I went up there one day on a Friday, and I went inside. It was the door was unlocked, and I went inside, and everything was missing. And I go, oh, "What man. in the world?" And this guy goes, "Oh yeah, we've we've closed, and I'm in here kind of." clearing everything out and i go do an inventory is everything gone he goes yeah and it's like uh, and they had it supposedly they had a sale that i missed oh that's and painful. they had some uh, well so i like the strathmore black hardcover sketchbooks and they don't make them anymore strathmore's mm-hmm. gone to a different design and i they're my favorite sketchbook and um and i'd gone in a few months before and bought one because they had, I mean, this was years after Strathmore stopped making them. They had maybe four or five of them, and I bought one, and I was like, oh. And then, you know, and the idea was I'd go back and buy, and I even thought maybe I should go back and buy those other ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went up there, and they were gone. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, we had a big sale. And I was like, oh, God, I would have loved to have bought those others for a deal, you know, because I'm still drawing one now, you know. Mm-hmm many years later you know again thinking an anti-fantastic four in regards to their looks wait a second maybe i should skip back while you were in a burn state of mind remember the suggestion for the crew of crooks Mm. (laughs) doesn't doesn't uh anti-fantastic four in regards to a, a bit younger a bit rougher around the edges Gotcha. Uh, Dan, please compile all these notes in a word document. <laughs> yeah, yeah, send them one. <laughs> Bur- uh, uh, Burn. Dan is Dan is sends me uh, Facebook messages, and a lot of times I won't see him until hours after he sends them, and they're really long. And uh, you know, so I'm 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 on Facebook, but I don't Messenger doesn't ping me when I get a message, so. Yeah. Did you did you see? I know uh, sometimes I so, I'll send you stuff, and because you get so much email, you probably don't even see stuff I might send you. Did you send that? Did you uh, click that link I sent you about Mia Goth uh, screaming? Uh, w Magazine. Oh, that's okay. Oh wait uh, a minute! Yeah, I did. Okay, but anyway, I just was so impressed by being able to to go from zero to sixty on. On that on intense volume. scream, you know, it's yeah. pretty. It was pretty fun, but, and you notice she everybody. Had a you, something, wasn't she? Huh? 
Was she at a podium, like at an interview? No, she just sit. She was sitting, being interviewed by that W magazine. Oh, okay. And, just, and uh, she's just asked casually, uh, I, "I hear you have a good scream." Says, "Yes, I think I'd rather do. Uh, would you like me to scream for you?" And you know, I can't do an English accent. And uh, boy, then she gives this scream, but the veins in her forehead come out and everything, just for a, a split second. And then it's so intense and uh, so well done. Everybody's just laughing. The the whole everybody in the studio is just laughing at how fun and intense it was. Just that quick. It's like, wow, you really amp things up here in the old studio. Who is she? I don't. The problem is, I don't know who she is. Oh yeah, well you you probably wouldn't even like these movies. Uh, there's this really good uh, horror director named Ty West that. Uh, linked up. They went down to New Zealand because if you got screened and everything, you could uh, sit there and work without, you know, worrying about tests or anything, you know, because they, oh, uh, okay. they, they can, okay. yeah, because they control. And so they were able to get there and they decided, hey, let's make two movies while we're here and we, we can oh, actually yeah. work. And so they did uh, X there's and. Such a there's such a deficit of movies now. It's amazing. It's like the movie industry doesn't exist hardly anymore. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's. I, I'm going to watch a Reacher tonight. <laughs> I'm that hard up. Oh. No, I, those things. Have you started on those at all? Um, I watched a little bit of the first season. Yeah, okay. he's, uh, well, Dan months, says he's, he's making. He's making notes. He will make notes, and he's working on the backstory. Guys, I got to run. Notes. Have yeah. a great night and have a safe weekend. And Thanks. I will work those notes for you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> see you later, Dan. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't see really. You. I was looking down at my, uh, I was looking down at a dozen different things today, looking at my reference for this and that. Sorry, I didn't uh, keep Dan up to date as I usually have in the past. Oh, yeah. The, uh, so, uh, I've been watching, I watched the first episode of that series you sent me, Ultra Q. Oh, yeah, yeah, kinda, yeah. That was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. Those like, are oh, very. They're, they're in this tunnel, and it's like, what the, you know? Yeah. Um, I've been watching uh, an app, a Roku app called Classic Television has MASH. So I've been watching some MASH, and I've been watching some Honeymooners. Because I like the honeymooners. Oh yeah, those are great. Yeah, great and stories man, told I well. Cash. I could, if you stuck me on a desert island, and you said you can have one TV series to watch, I'd probably pick Mash. Because I can just I can watch Mash. I, I mean, Mash is I can quote. I'll watch over and over again. Yeah, you, you know? dig the characters. Yeah, I dig the characters, and Hawkeye or Alan Alda is just so funny and quick witted and. Yeah, um, and I watch Magic, great, great you know. delivery. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you I, know, the script has probably got it all there for him, but you know, you gotta, you, he makes you believe he's this quick-witted guy. That's that's the yeah. thing. That's that's the magic of it. He's he makes you believe it. He's uh, thinking of it on the spot. Well, I used to watch Mash because it came on after the news after the evening news, like at 1030. And I would watch mass before I went to bed every night. Cause like when I was 12, my mom, my grandmother bought me a TV for my room. And so, I mean, I watched mass from then on. And then, and I remember being a kid when we traveled, it was like, is mash on here? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like it was on everywhere at 1030. Sound like Dustin Hoffman. I gotta see oh, Wapner. Yeah. Gotta see Wapner. Judge Wapner. Gotta watch Wapner. Uh, no. Yeah. I was like that. Um, the thing, the, the, the new thing I'm watching, and I think it's on prime is something called the guest book. And it's written by, I think his name is Greg Garcia. I believe he's the guy that wrote my name is Earl, which I kind of liked. And he's done a couple other things, but it's just this, and I don't think it's very long, but I kind of, it's about a it's about a rental property, like a vacation home, and they've got a guest book, and all these guests come, and they just have unusual stories about, you know, whatever. But it's just like, you know, like, I don't know if you're watching My Name is Earl, but they're, you know, just just 
slice of life, low life kind of people that have some kind of problem. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay, dude, I'm gonna let. Yeah, you go. I guess we ought to. We ought to. Uh, Dan's last note was no worries, Ellis. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. He didn't care if I got him out of sequence and ignored him for whole streams of consciousness. No, I got uh, him Dan, mostly. Dan, he, I got Dan's him mostly. Good, in. Dan's a good guy. Okay, um, uh, I'll end it now, Scott. Thanks for uh, br sharing your stuff. I bet there's a lot of people kind of jealous of uh, some of that rare, some of those rarities you got, and some of the effort. I mean, they're not so much effort. Air, uh, rarities hey, this, is this, you put this, the effort all into it. All this X Men stuff is it's available on on John yeah. Byrne's website. In fact, you they just got to do the work. Revived, they yeah, you got to download six hundred pages. Yeah, uh, they recently revived the gallery on his web page. It's been the, it's all been broken links for a couple of years, and the guy that maintained it had a uh, uh, like a liver transplant or something, and he's like, "Hey, I'm doing good, so I've got I'm back up." And, I got it all fixed. So there's a lot of good stuff floating around out there. Uh, Burnerrobotics.com is the forum. So <coughs> very cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will end our stream now. And uh, yeah. thanks everybody that came that eventually yeah, comes thanks, by. Everybody.